I'm starting my tomato plants today. It's a beautiful day here in Appalachia. March is when we always start our tomato plants. Over the years, we try different times, and that's just the time that seems to work best for us, usually about mid-March, uh, maybe slightly before that. Whenever, you know, when that day, that perfect day arrives, that's when we do it, but that's what we aim for. We, this greenhouse that we have, Matt built it. Uh, we all pitched in and helped. It was, I think it was about 2011. And I will link down below to a blog post I wrote that describes how we build it. We found the directions online somewhere, I'm sure. And uh, Matt's very handy. So from that, he could figure out how to adjust it to what we needed. And it's worked really well. Before that, prior to 2011, there was a greenhouse down the road from where I live at a school. And as part of kind of the um, curriculum there, the students every year would start plants, flowers mostly, but they did some vegetables, and then they would sell them uh, as income for the school, kind of to raise money, a fundraiser. Well, at that time, right beside the school, there was a community center, and Pap was kind of the janitor of the community center. So, of course, he was constantly in and out of the, the, the gentleman that helped with the greenhouses, and him were big buddies and all that, so I had the opportunity, the access to that, that I actually started my plants in there, and that was wonderful. But once we actually got ours, and we were kind of forced to, um, they kind of discontinued the program, and then the gentleman was leaving, so it was kind of like, well, you're not going to have that next year. you got to do something. So it kind of kicked us into gear to, to build our own um, greenhouse, and I'm so glad we did because, of course, it's right here at home, and it's so much easier to take care of the plants and, to, to you know, just for them to be for it to be available anytime you want it to be instead of when the school was open. So it's been so, so nice. Now that first year when we built it, the very first plastic we put on, we did not know about that. So by it, it did really well, worked wonderful, but by that following year, the plastic was just in shreds because we'd purchased the wrong plastic. It didn't withstand the, the wind and the sun and all that kind of stuff. So we had to change it. And that plastic lasted us all the way till last year. And it wasn't that it was falling apart last winter. Um, it, it wasn't coming apart or anything like that, but it had just the like the part that the sun could come through. It actually had turned like a yellow color and sun wasn't penetrating it like it did previous to that. So um, we got a lot of use out of that plastic, but we, we did redo it last year uh, and could tell a big difference in last year's. It's kind of like we hadn't noticed that it was getting you know, dimmer and dimmer in here until finally we did and realized that that was the issue and decided to change the plastic. And then last year, everything was back to normal like it had been. So we usually start our tomatoes in here. I do peppers in here, but this year I started my peppers inside, so they're they're still in the house growing, but I think I'm ready to move them out here just to where they'll be easier and get even more sunlight than they're under grow lights right now. Uh, and sometimes I'll start like watermelons and squash and things like that, but most of those things I, I just direct so every once in a while I'll do one or two like a zucchini and a squash thinking I'm going to get a jump on, on having some um, produce, having some squash or zucchini, you know, sooner than the ones I planted in the ground, but typically that don't really happen. It, it usually it's by the time they kind of situate to the soil, then the ones I planted direct sowed are up a, about as high as high as they are. When it comes to planting my tomatoes, I use solo cups, just red cups. Uh, I found they work very well for me. I've been using them for many years. I don't remember who first told me about it. But the main thing is you need to make sure that you poke a hole in the bottom. I usually use a pair of scissors or an old nail or something. And also, they're handy because you can ride on them. So I've got Arkansas Traveler on this one, so they're easier to keep track of what tomato, what plant is where. If you put them in the right one, sometimes I'm surprised myself because I'm not paying attention. But um, I can usually get at least maybe three, four years out of one of these reusing them. Now, they do eventually get brittle, just like all plastic does. But I've found that I can reuse them fairly uh, at least three years, if not four. So there's one you can see that's been, been used before. Um, you can tell by the sunshine hitting it and the dirt inside it. Now, many gardening... Uh, specialist or professionals or whatever will tell you that you shouldn't do that you shouldn't reuse them unless you clean them that you you know you have to sterilize them because of disease um, i don't always get around to doing that and i've never had a problem of course i may have a problem this year but um i do reuse them a lot you can see there's another one that where i've marked out and then put another name on top of it and you can see that they're um what's inside them these 
work very well for me but there's all sorts when it comes to starting seedlings there's all kinds of different options of course you can reuse the ones that maybe you buy at a, your local um, feed store or gardening center where the you know you buy a plant and it comes in a little black plastic container you can reuse those that works very well one time I made mine out of newspaper that works very well if you're just going to put it directly into the ground but the because the newspaper will de decompose I hadn't done that in many years though I did that when the girls were, were little so when it comes to actually planting the seeds in the cups I just use pot and soil you can buy a specialty starting mix but I've found pot and soil works well and I've used all different varieties uh, I use whatever I can find and most of the time I use whatever I can afford if that makes sense to you uh, that's something that I've always had to worry about and it works just fine you want it to be light and fluffy kind of but any kind of pot and mix usually is you know I wouldn't um, want to start start them with dirt like my red clay dirt however when I think about starting tomatoes, when I'm starting them every year like this, I'm always reminded of the stories Pap told me about his mother. And his mother would have not had any pot and soil, no store to go to to buy pot and soil. People would probably laughed at her if she'd tried to. But she would start them um, in beds where they would cover them with a sheet. Maybe they would burn a fire there first to heat the ground and then plant them and then cover it with a sheet. Sometimes she would plant them if they lived in a place where the porch had kind of a overhang and the sunshine, it was like a southern exposure, you know, where the sun really shone right there. She might plant them underneath the edge of the porch so it was protected from above from frost and things like that. Kind of helped it stay some warmer. But then also that sunshine shone directly in there. So what I've found with gardening is, you know, when you think about like how, how deep do you plant a, a tomato seed? Well, you don't need to plant it very deep because it's a very teeny tiny seed. But when I th think about gardening, each seed has so much desire to grow that for people that have never gardened before, I tell them it's not that hard. You can do it because that desire in the seed uh, the wonderful way our Creator has made it, it, it wants to grow. So you're just kind of helping it along, but it really wants to grow. A, a great example of that is the Juliet tomatoes that I grew last year that I was so excited about and I planted. They did okay, but not as good as I wanted them to do. But in a different bed where I did not plant one, I had some Juliet, I had one, maybe two, but one for sure, Juliet come up there probably from seeds I had used, um, I had eaten, you know, and then throwed out stuff from the year before. And that plant produced way more than the six plants that I purposely planted. And nature took care of that. I didn't have to worry about it, you know. It was cold, it was, it laid there all winter in the freezing cold. Uh, no one, you know, people probably, I probably stepped on it, I probably dumped stuff on top of it, all that kind of stuff, and it still did better than the ones I intentionally did. So that's kind of a good reminder if you're just starting to garden. It's, the seed wants to grow, it wants to produce, it's in its, in its being, you know, to actually do that. And if you, if you don't have a large place to garden like I do, you can grow tomatoes very well in a container. You know, you can, there's all kinds of specialty ones that you can see for sale, but just a container, just a flower pot on your deck. It, it needs sunshine and water mostly and support if you don't want it to, you know, if, it's, if it grows too tall and you don't have anything to support it. But you can also lean it across your deck or, you know, tie some string and tie something to it. Get a limb out of the woods and stick down beside it. All kinds of things like that you could do for support. I was going to share with you the tomatoes that I'm planting this year. So last year I tried a few new ones. Some was because Katie had got me some for Christmas. Uh, one that I just found and I thought would be really good and I wanted to try. None of those did we like enough to try again. I will save the seeds just in case I ever need them, but, but by no means do we want to ever fool with those again unless we had to. They just didn't do good for us and we didn't like them. Our number one favorite one that we love is Cherokee Purple. Now, if you've ever seen them, if you're not familiar with them, they're the tomatoes that, which there's several, so there's different varieties, but it's kind of got a bluish or purplish dark, like a, when it's ripe, it gets dark, especially on the shoulders, like of the tomato. Very, very tasty uh, tomato. So that's one we always do, always. Another one that we always do, let me slip through, there's more turkey purple, is Mountain Princess. 
and I don't even remember how I really found out about growing Mountain Princess, but I really love them. And it's just like kind of a smallish red tomato, but they, they do very well and they're very good for canning. Uh, when it comes to canning tomatoes though, I can whatever it is. Like I don't, I don't grow one specific tomato for canning. A lot of people do that because it, it, the smaller ones are easier to fool with when you're canning. I just throw them in there all together. So it may be a great old big Cherokee purple and then some little, little ones. I don't, that doesn't bother me. Uh, but Mountain Princess does, is one that seems to can very well for me and we love it. Usually we would do, for many, many years, we did Arkansas Traveler. And that's another one that's kind of an, uh, uh, about, you know, not really big, but a smaller uh, red one. And last year we did not plant that one because I planted that other one that I thought would do really good that was just a total flop. And uh, Matt was like, don't ever, don't ever do that again. <laughs> so this year we're going to go back to the, to the Arkansas Traveler. It does very well for us. Another one that here's an interesting one. So this is a cream and sausage. It's a yellow kind of pear shaped tomato. And the first, when I first found this tomato was gosh, years ago, I mean, probably 10, 10 years ago at least. And a local kind of um, organization was Christian Love at that time. Today it's Renewed Hope Ministries, I think. They had a greenhouse. And one day I stopped there just to see what they were offering. They had tomato plants and I got two or three and the cream and sausage was one of the ones I got. Well, we just loved the tomato. We just loved it. About that big and, and kind of round, but really flavorful, just wonderful. Um, and we grew it and grew it and I saved the seeds and you know each year I shared them with other people but the last time I didn't I don't think it was last year maybe it was last year that I tried to plant one from some seeds that I had saved it did not turn out to be a cream and sausage tomato it was like a pinky red tomato a bigger one so that happens can happen with tomatoes ha can happen with a lot of things but with tomatoes they can cross pollinate sometimes so for whatever reason I was able to save the seed for you know many years and then all of a sudden last year uh, when I planted it was not what it turned out to be it was not a um, a true it wasn't even yellow I mean you know it was totally different shape totally different color it was good it was edible but it wasn't this so I was happy to find I, I just happened to see this on the Michigan uh, gardener in my gardener if you've never looked at his site he has great seeds and they're very affordable so I, I'm anxious to do that one again Another little, kind of a little one that we've grown for many years is black cherry. So again, like the Cherokee purple, it kind of has that dusty hue to it and it's very flavorful and very prolific. I really like it. More Cherokee purple. Now, um, not last year, but the year before that, I was introduced to the Juliet tomato, which is a little uh, red. We call those any kind of little tomato, we call them Tommy Toes is what we call them, but it's kind of a pear shaped instead of a round one and I found out about it from one of my friends farmer Teddy Teddy he's a who's a great farmer and I just loved them I adored them so I planted those last year I'm gonna plant them again this year and they they didn't do as good as farmer Teddy's did but they did okay and um, hopefully they'll do even better this year I'm gonna keep trying because they were just such the best little tomato and so tasty and so prolific uh, just really prolific so I'm gonna gonna do that for sure Another one that I found out from my friend Teddy was Sun Gold. I'd never grown those before. So this is just like a little yellow, yellow gold tomato and uh, very prolific and very tasty too. One that I tried last year, which is not a true tomato, I don't think, uh, but it's lychee tomato. And if you watched any of my garden videos last year, you noticed it was the one that we always talked about that had the thorns. It has really big thorns. Uh, and the fruit, at first when I tasted it, I thought, eh, it, it's more of a fruity flavor for sure. Nothing, it's not a true tomato and it's little. The fruits are little. I thought, nah, I won't never do that again. But by the end of the summer, it had really grown on me. So uh, Matt was like, I hope you're not going to plant that again because where I put it, we had to move by it a lot and I think everybody in the whole family ended up getting scratched more than once. So maybe I'll put it in a different place, but I'm at least going to plant one. And I've read that in other uh, areas, in days gone by, maybe, I don't know if they still do it today, but they actually planted this around their garden as kind of a barrier to keep animals and people out. So, so that's how, how serious those thorns are. But the little fruit is good. It's tasty. I was the only one that ate it. Everybody else was too afraid to eat it. 
some other uh, new ones that I want to do this year I'm going to try. I couldn't resist. I said last year after trying those new ones and not liking any of them, I said, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to my tried and true, and I'm not going to be wooed by, by anything else, but I was wooed. So I seen this Cherry Tomato Hartman's Yellow Gooseberry. So it says, this variety originates in the early 1800s with the J.M. Hartman and Daughter Seed Company of Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. Very productive, producing hundreds of fruits per season, sweet, yellow, and delicious. So I'm going to try that one. Never tried it before. And also, i seen this, and I think Teddy, that's why I got this one. I think he grew this one too, Speckled Roman. These beauties are both speckled and striped in yellow and orange on a bright red base. Thick flesh makes them great for both processing and also for eating fresh. Very productive. Um, so we'll see if they're very productive for me. They were for Teddy, if that's the same one he grew. I'm not sure. And then another little yellow one is a golden nugget that I, I just want to try that one. I've seen it. One other one that we grew, I've grew last year and that I will always grow from now on. And I don't know the name of it, but my friends, David and Carolyn Anderson, I have a great video with them if you've not watched it where I interview them. And I'll link to that. Um, it's, it's a little bitty orange Tommy Toe, what we would call it. And when I went to interview them, it was like September or something like that. And they still had tomatoes growing on it as you walked up to their house. And, and I was like, oh, and I, I you know, got one and ate it and it was so good. So then before I left, they picked them, picked me a whole little uh, container full and sent them home with me. And then of course I saved the seeds and they grew wonderful for us last year and they were so good. But I asked Carolyn if she knew the, you know, what the name was. And she said they'd grown them for so many years that they just didn't remember where they got it or what the name of it was. So that's another one that I will always grow now. And some some folks uh, sent me seeds, which is nice. A lot of people have sent me flower seeds and different things. Uh, but Larry sent me several seeds, and some of them were tomatoes. So I'm going to try. This one was a red and yellow tomato. Let's see if he says anything about them. Uh, so four types of tomato seeds. Let me just tell you straight from him instead of me. All four are in open pollinated heirloom seeds. All but one were, uh, from my, were from his father as he was the one who raised all the plants for us kids after his passing. My cousin and I moved his small greenhouse to my place and started raising plants from seed myself 20 years ago. So one of these is the mortgage lifter. Very common among the older, um, old variety, pink, meaty, hardly any seeds, all big, all meat, biggest we have got is 40. Four pounds. Wow. Well, 40 pounds. That would be a really big tomato, wouldn't it? Four pounds. So you can see why they call it a mortgage lifter. I have tried those in the past and they didn't do very well for me. I do need to try his seed though and see if it does. So I may not do that one this year just because I've got so many, but I'm going to do all of the rest of them. So originally called the Radiator Charlie, Charlie owned a radiator shop, paid his mortgage from selling the tomato, and he named it the Mortgage Lifter. You may have heard that story. Uh, that's how it came to have its name. And then he doesn't have any stories about the rest of them, but the red and yellow, uh, same as for very few seeds and very meaty. Giant Italian paste, this one is very large Italian tomato, some as large as a pop can. Last is Black Russian. I know nothing of this one. My cousin found it online somewhere. It's a very tasty tomato, and it's more prolific than the other three. So I hope to try some of those this year. But I hope that you'll leave a comment and tell me what's your favorite tomatoes. Is there some that you like more than others? Are you like me, and you can't, you're tempted every year to try new ones, even though kind of in the back of your mind you're like you've been gardening for a long time, and you know the ones you like the best and the ones you that, that do the best? Um, because sometimes it depends on, you know, where you're at. Lots of times it does. I used to try so hard to go grow brandy wines, and I loved the taste of them, and they were just beautiful. But I might get two tomatoes on one plant. They just did not do well for us. Uh, maybe my soil, maybe the north side of the mountain. I'm not sure what it was. But sometimes you've got to figure out, um, and like I said, for us, we've figured out the Arkansas Traveler, the Mountain Princess, Cherokee Purple, Black Cherry, and always do good for us. And the cream and sauce, uh, that one, even though I would kind of was afraid I'd lost the seed, that one does. And then last year, Carolyn and David's did very well for us. And um, the Sun Gold and the Juliet did so-so, but I like them so much, I'm willing to try them again. It's just really beyond rewarding to, to start these tomato seeds here in the greenhouse, uh, kind of nurture them, you've got to water them. 
this is like I said March so we will definitely have some cold nights between now and when I'm ready to put tomatoes out in the garden so you've got to make sure that you've got them protected we have one little small heater in here uh, and we also have a fan when it does get hot to suck the hot out too hot air out um, but there's a lot of baby and you've got to take care of them so and then there's the work of putting them in the ground and then the work of you know tying them up and supporting them and all that kind of stuff so while it is work it's just so rewarding to be able to go outside and pick a big tomato and eat it and it tastes so good so much better um, than, than what you can buy in stores and and then to be able to harvest them and put them in a jar sun, or dehydrate them freeze them whatever it is that you do and then pull them out for your family on a cold winter's day is just just the ultimate <laughs> it's just one of my favorite things in life so please uh, drop back by to help me celebrate Appalachia, but also to just come along as I plant and make a garden in Appalachia this year.